with groups, the cut through is so much better. You get so much more engagement. It seems to come up in people's feed more. So you really can get a lot more cut through there. Um, and the other thing about groups versus pages is although with Facebook people can comment on your stuff on pages, it still is a bit of a one-way conversation. You're putting the content out and then they choose whether to engage. Whereas with groups, your customers can actually start the conversation. They can actually talk to you and you talk back. It's much more of a real, real thing. And we'll talk more about the benefits of a community. So when I started out, I joined lots of other people's Facebook groups. You know, that was how I started. But I really got pissed off at the rules. You know, you can't promote unless the day has a P in it. And on Tuesday, you can only do this. And the admins get annoyed with you. And so I wanted to set up my group partially because I'm a control freak. And it allows me to set the rules. My group, my rules. The other thing is, is that I get to control the conversation. So I can talk about what I want to talk about, which is super important. Obviously, it makes you look like the go-to expert. If you have a group about pigeons and you're talking about pigeons all day, people are going to think, wow, that person really knows about pigeons. And they're going to be top of mind next time they want to buy a pigeon, which obviously is a regular occurrence. You're going to build your authority. That's the same kind of thing. But you're also going to build relationships and trust. If you're chatting with people in a community every day, people start to like you. People start to feel like they know you. And obviously, we don't want to be too cynical about it. If people trust and like and know you, they're more likely to buy from you. Yeah? You're not a stranger to them. Obviously, it's a great way to grow your email list. And I'm going to explain how to do that shortly. Get more traffic to your website. And while traffic isn't part of Google's algorithm, it's what the people do on the site that could increase your ranking and your conversion and all that kind of thing. Um, you build a tribe of potential customers. You can call them a tribe. I like to call my groups gangs. We have flick knives and shiny jackets. Uh, so you're building up a group of people who love what you do and will become advocates for you. You can also use it to test and launch new products. So whenever I launch something new, I always talk about it in my group first. I see if people like it or don't like it. And that's a great indicator for me, an easy, really cheap, easy way to A-B test different ideas. And finally, you get to sell your products, because that's what it's all about. Yeah. So. If you're thinking about starting a Facebook group, you really need to think about your business why. In marketing, there can be this tendency to think you have to do all the things. They've got a podcast. I need a podcast. They've got this. I'll do this. I need to be on Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn. and Pin Ugh, It's exhausting. So I see a lot of people starting Facebook groups because they think it's the thing to do. But don't do that. Really try and think about why you want to have your group because that will guide the culture of the group, the rules that you set down. So an example, if you're a WordPress developer, a great reason to start a group would be to have one central place where you can talk to all your customers. So as soon as you sign up a customer to your business, you say, hey, by the way, I've got a Facebook group. And then every time there's a WordPress update or something like that, you can send a message out in your group going, guys, don't touch your WordPress update. I'll do it for you. you know, or there's a pl uh, an announcement about Yoast or something. You can share that in the group. It cuts down the email communication. It allows you to have all your people in one room and be able to talk to them directly. Now, obviously, again, if they're in your group and they see something pop up, they might be inclined to go, oh, I haven't spoken to Olga for a while. I might ask her to help me with this new form I want to build. It's going to keep you top of mind. Yeah? So that's a great reason. For me, I have um, products that I want to sell. It's a great place for me to have a captive audience of people where I can talk to them about my things. Rather than me having to go to 17 different groups, my people are already there. They're already in my virtual store. So the other thing you need to think about is who you are as a human. Because running a Facebook group has its challenges. So if you're somebody who's easily triggered by people being rude or obnoxious, if you're someone who's not particularly patient and a little bit snappy, if you don't love social media hard, like, you know, you're like, oh, God, I hate Facebook, but it's a necessary evil, don't start a Facebook group. Uh, you've got to be really good at setting boundaries because people will push them as they do in business. In your Facebook group, people will take the piss. They'll break the rules. How are you going to deal with that? How are you going to push back on people? You also have to be OK with not being liked, because you are the leader of your group. You may have to sudden, sometimes discipline people, throw people out. Those people are going to leave your group and think, that ah, Kate Toon's a right cow. And are you happy with them going out into the universe having that feeling? You kind of have to be. In business, not everyone's going to like you, and that's OK. So 
let me tell you a little bit about my groups. I've got uh, about, I can't even remember how many I've got. I put some of them in here. My biggest one is the I Love SEO group. I recommend you all join it. It's splendid. And that's got about, nearly about 7,000 members, 6,000 6, members, 6,000 members. Oh, that's okay. It was, a it's a pretty big number. I can see why I'm uh, <laughs> excited. So that's my big group. It's a free group, and it's where I give support to people who do my free courses and my paid courses, my low-cost courses. But obviously, as well, clearly, it's the start of my sales funnel. Yes, I said funnel. I'm sorry. Someone had to say it. It's a very low barrier to entry to join my group. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to do anything. But then you're in the Tooniverse. You're my creature. Uh, and I can start trying to shove you down my sales funnel in a very gentle and persuasive way. The other groups that I have, I have a group called the Misfit Entrepreneurs. And that group was for a book that I wrote to try and sell the book. It doesn't do a great job of selling the book, but it's a very funny place to be. I have the Clever Copywriting Community. That is a paid membership group. So people pay an annual subscription to be in there. There's about 160 or so copywriters in there. So that's an example of a paid group. I have the SEO Master Chefs, which is a paid subscription group for people who want to learn about SEO. I have my study group. So every time I run a round of my course, you will join a community for the three months that the course is running. And then you can either upgrade to the Master Chefs or go back to the I Love SEO group. Um, I think I have more. No, I do have more, but I haven't put a slide in. Uh, so I have a lot of groups, and I use them in a lot of different ways. But the one thing that is consistent on all of them is that I am the leader of the group. So you have to be confident about being a leader. And there's nothing wrong with being a leader. People want to follow people. People want advice. But you have to be comfortable being that person. And I remember when I first started out, I wasn't that comfortable. I kind of hid in my own group. So you have to be a leader because you're going to set the culture. You're going to set the rules. You're going to decide what does and doesn't go. Yeah? So if you're not confident like that, your group won't work. We've all been in those groups where you go in and it's just a complete spam fest of just promo posts and there's no real, what is this group about? It's called like business something or mummy mum business mum mum. About 900 mummy mum groups. Um, and you don't really sure what it's there about. You're not sure how it's going to help you. It's just more junk in your feed. And we all get enough junk in our Facebook feed anyway. So people are going to bounce straight out of the groups. So you've got to be very clear about what you stand for, what your values are, and what problem your group solves. Then you have to think about paid or free. So free groups are great because obviously anyone can join. There's a low barrier to entry. They take a bit more admin. There's, you know, because you're going to have more people in them. Um, and obviously, you have to be careful about your competitors joining that group. And I'm going to talk to, you know, you start a WordPress group, some other WordPress person comes in, and they start giving advice and tips. And you're like, hey, hang on, this is my group. Bugger off. And it's very hard to control that if it's free. Paid groups are obviously better because you're getting money for them. Um, now, Facebook has recently announced that you're going to be able to charge membership on Facebook. I would never do that. So my Facebook membership groups are part of something else. They're a bonus. So when you join the Clever Copywriting community, you're joining the community for which there is a Facebook group. You're not paying for the Facebook group, if that makes sense. Now, why do I do that? Because we never want to build our business on someone else's land. That's why none of us are on Wix or Weebly or Shopify. We're on WordPress because we get to control it. So you always have to think, if one day Facebook pulls the rug out from you, how would you keep communicating with these people? What would you do with them? You need to keep that in mind, because we know that Facebook are tricksy little beasts. Um, so let me take you through the practical steps of setting up a Facebook group. You might already know, but there's some little extra pointers here that I want to talk to you about. The first step is before you set up a Facebook group, you have to have a lead magnet. So in wanky marketing terms, a lead ma magnet is something that lures people onto your email list. because we, they could join the Facebook group and leave again. We want to be able to keep having that conversation with them. We want to get them onto our list. SEO is, I think, the most powerful marketing tool. I will say that because I'm a SEO teacher. Email marketing is the second most. Like, well, but you've got to get people on your list first. So come up with a lead magnet. And this is the step that most people miss out. They start their group, but they don't really have anything to give to the people. So whether it's a free checklist, an ebook, a video course, it doesn't have to be amazing. My lead magnet is called SEO Nibbles, which was a terrible thing to call it, because throughout the videos I kept saying SEO Nipples. 
and I just couldn't stop myself, so in the end I just left it in. Um, but it's a three-day video course with just 10-minute videos talking generally about SEO, and that's what you get when you join my group. Yeah, it gives me a reason to collect their email addresses. Now I can remarket to people. So do your lead, think of your lead market first. Checklist, course, whatever it may be. What are you going to sell to people in this group? Even if you're a service-based business with no products, try and have some kind of product, free product that you can give to people as a thank you for joining the group. The next thing you need to do is choose a name. And again, you need to be thoughtful about this. So is it going to be your business name or is it going to be some kind of generic thing? So there's a big group on Facebook called Business, Business, Business. Kind of clear what that's about. It's kind of about business. Um, but be careful as well that you don't pick something so generic that you get mixed up. As I said, I'm in about 17 mum groups. Mums in business, business mums, mums of business, business mums who like mums, who are business. And I can't remember which one's which. So try and pick a name that's open to everybody and inclusive and states what it is, explains what it is. But I think as well, you know, think about the long term. Is it, is it a business builder for you? Is it branding? So I've played around with my names a little bit. And now my group is called I Love SEO. So it sounds like it's, you know, it's for everyone who loves SEO. And then it says with Kate Toon. So it's got a little bit of branding in there as well. Because as well, remember how are people going to find it? Most of us find groups by just typing words into the search bar. SEO, so you want to have a keyword in there. Uh, Facebook has an algorithm, just like Google. It's a crap algorithm. But, and you also, people might type in your name as well. So try and work, work those in. So you choose a name. And then you need to, uh, obviously, that reflects what it's about. Then you need to create the group. So creating a group is really easy. It takes like one minute. Um, and you need to add one friend. So to have a Facebook group, you do need to have at least one friend. OK? Sorry about that. Maybe you could make a friend here today, Steph. So it's going to happen. So you find you have to have one friend to make your group work. And then you have to choose whether it's public, closed, or secret. So there are differences in how those work. So this little chart is the, is the chart that shows that. You don't want to do public. It's pointless. Do you know what I mean? It's like having another Facebook page. So by having a, a closed group, it just gives us that little air of, oh, I'm, I'm entering something a bit special. There's a bit of exclusivity here. So with a closed group, you can't see the posts unless you're in the group. Yeah? So again, especially if you're worried about competitors, closed group is a bit better. Secret isn't so great because you can't share a link to it. You have to actually have to be friends with the person to add them to. So secret's kind of great because you can't see who the members are. And obviously, people go through your member list and try and add them to your group. People are weird. So I would say, if you're going to start one off, start with closed. It's the best way to go. OK, then you can do other, you know, you can brand your group, nice big header at the top. You can choose the type of group it is, whether it's a marketing group, a support group. Now Google's just uh, opened up something else, which is study groups, with, which have learning modules and units in them as well. So you can use that. Again, I teach courses, but I'm not going to get too invested in that units and courses thing in the Facebook group because if I do and I put too much effort into it, Facebook will start charging me for it and take it away. So again, I'm never going to rely too much on my Facebook group because it's so tricksy. You can now choose a color and the, so it shows up as a nice color in your mobile device. The dimensions for the graphic at the top seem to change every two minutes. I just use Canva to create my graphics for the top of the group. You know, make it nice and clear, nice and clean. You can have a link to your, your lead magnet. I'll talk about it there, but just keep it nice and clean and simple. The next step is you write your group rules. And I'd just like you to read the first three rules of, of my group there. Uh, so you have to write your group rules, and it, that really comes back to your why. Why did you set this group up? What is and isn't allowed? And you're allowed to say. So for example, in my I Love SEO group, there is no promotion. I can promote. It's my group. But no one else can promote. I don't do promo days. I, don't, you know, I didn't build a group of 6,000 people who are interested in SEO for some other SEO person to come in and start selling to them. That would be ridiculous. Why would I waste my time doing that? So set your rules and be ready to enforce them. Yeah, so you have to be willing to enforce them. Things to cover are like how and when is the group supported? Is it supported 24-7? No, of course not. You've got a life. Are you going to be in there at the weekends or not? Are people allowed to free post or not? So what do I mean by that? Some groups, when you go in, you can write whatever you want, and it immediately appears. But in my I Love SEO group, I approve every post that goes live. 
because I can't risk someone putting up something that's negative or that's going to be about a competitor. So I approve every post, but the other joy of that is that I can be first to comment because the other problem with the most Facebook groups is the business owner gets lost and you, you don't actually know who's running the group because you never see them. So, you know, when someone posts in the I Love SEO group, it doesn't go approved straight away. I pick some time when I've got a bit of time. It's often most of my things that get posted are questions. So I wait until I have some time, then I approve all the questions and I write the answers and they go live. And I'm first to answer, I'm showing my authority, I'm building trust, that works for me. In my Confessions of a Misfit Entrepreneur group, it's free posting. And that is a whole lot more work because people post wildly inappropriate things in that group. Wildly strange, unusual things. And then I get notifications of people complaining and then I have to admin them and we have to have discussions. So I managed to run the I Love SEO group on my own. 6,000 people, there's no other admin other than me. The Confessions of a Misfit Entrepreneur group, I've got two, two, three admins now because it's free posting. So don't underestimate that. You know, and people are sneaky. People will wait until 2 a.m. to post their promo thing, and then you won't spot it till 10 the next day, and then everyone will be like, why did they get to promo? And you're like, they didn't, I just didn't get time to remove it. You've got to think about these things. So free posting or not free posting, in my paid groups, it's uh, free posting again. So in your rules, include your guidelines. I like to use hashtags in my group to signpost what the content's about. You can make the hashtag up, but at least use one because it just pops. The hashtag really pops, and you can see whether it's a question or whatever. Um, you have to have rules about not PMing other members, which is a big thing, not, not messaging people. Anything that you think that weird people are going to do, they will do, believe me. So you have to put the rules in there. Don't slag people off is another one. We had a lot of people screen grabbing other people's stuff and saying, this is crap. And it's like other people in the group go, I know that person. You're a bitch. And then you're like trying to separate people. Yeah, you see the very worst of humanity in Facebook groups. The f thing I like to do is make a Facebook Live video of me saying, hey, welcome to the group. And then have that as my pinned post. So I pin that to the top of the page. And then I have my group rules there. Keep them updated. Include your lead magnet. Include terms and conditions. If you are thinking about starting a group, feel free to go to the I Love SEO group and copy my rules and edit them. There's some stuff there about legalities and privacy and stuff that you can use in your group as, as well, just to cover your bottom um, if people get um, arsy. Okay, the next thing is to choose your questions. So now you have an ability to ask three questions when people join your group. Fairly new thing, six, six or so months ago. Use them wisely. So in the Misfits group, I ask them how they heard about the group because I'm interested to know which channel is driving people to my group. Um, I ask them if they bought my book because most of them haven't. So I'm like going, hey, book, buy my book, buy my book. And um, that's to try and help make, sell the book. Um, and then I ask them to pop their email in and I send them the first chapter of the book. So that's my Misfits one. In my I Love SEO one, the first question I ask them is, do you teach SEO or do SEO? And because SEO people are so arrogant and obnoxious, they're like, yeah, I do SEO for this person and this person and this person. I'm brilliant. So I block them straight away. <laughs> so that means that I'm cutting down the competitors in my group because, you know, I'm a nice, abundance mindset kind of person, but I'm not stupid. Yeah? So I ask that question straight up front. And most people are, you know, I mean, sure, some people surely lie, but most people answer it honestly, and then I, I block them and they don't get in. The next question I say is, how did you hear about the group? Because that's really interesting to me. Was it the podcast? Was it this? Was it that? And then the final question I ask is their email address. So this is where you collect their email address. Now, because of GDPR, all my emails are double opt-in. So the first email they get is an opt-in email. But they can get a free course and a free checklist. So I make it very enticing for them to join, to give me their email address. And then I've got them. Yeah, I mean, they may unsubscribe, but most people don't. Yeah, so then they're in. And if people do not answer the questions or people do not give me their email address, they do not get in the group. Yeah, just delete. So when, you're, when people come into the group to approve them, you can filter them in lots of different ways. You can filter blokes, women. You can filter how long they've been on Facebook. It's a really important one because people set up fake accounts. So if they only joined Facebook in the last couple of months, it's probably a fake account. And, you know, the every time that you trust that person and let them in, the first thing they do is try and spam the group. So, again, have your rules, have your questions, and don't be afraid of not letting people in. And make sure that you gather email addresses. Now, obviously, it's a manual process, 
I have a VA that lets people in every couple of days and adds their email to my email tool. There's no way of hooking that up from there straight into Active Campaign or ConvertKit or whatever. It's a manual thing. The next thing I do is think about creating content. And this is where people struggle the most with groups because they've like, got their group, but they don't really know what to put in it. So you really have to, have to mix it up. Obviously, you're going to have the welcome post with the rules and, and a video. And then I reckon it's a good idea to have 10 or so posts ready to go. Do you know what I mean? So you can post them in the next couple of days. Or the, so there's some stuff in there when people arrive. Because when people arrive, they kind of look around a little bit and within five seconds decide whether that group's for them. So, you know, if you're just starting a group, maybe make sure that you've got some tips in there, some videos, you know, some useful stuff to get people started so they get the vibe of the group straight away. Um, and then think about a content schedule. Now, I'm terrible at this, so this is one of those examples of do what I say rather than do what I do. I have no schedule, and if there's one thing I can't abide in groups, it's Friday and Monday this and Tuesday this. You know, it's like, it's Tuesday, Tuesday's promo day. And then if you try and forget your promo on a different day, you're in trouble and blah, blah, blah. I like, don't like doing days of the week because I can't remember them and so I don't expect anybody else would either. So I just post a lot of random stuff. One of the most popular things in my misfit groups is the ugly selfie competition. So you might think, well, what the heck's that got to do with business? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with business, but people are sharing funny pictures, it's building community, and you're interspersing that kind of content with serious business content. If every post you post is a really useful WordPress tip, people are going to leave that group straight away. We all know that on Facebook, the, the thing that you put hours in, the thoughtful post with useful advice, no one likes it. The picture of a cat falling off something, everyone loves it. So you have to mix it up. And don't, don't underestimate the fact that people do read those serious posts. They just don't interact with them as much. So the things that work really well for me are videos. So posting videos, people really like that. Facebook Lives, takes a couple of seconds. Don't worry about looking sexy. Just do it, just start. Polls are great. So polls are the easiest type of content. You know, make it a really yes, no answer. Everybody interacts with them. And the more interaction you get, the more people will see the next post you do. So a classic thing that I always do is do a really stupid post like, you know, do you like... You know, I can't even think of anything. Do you like hedgehogs or piglets? It's something stupid. Do you know what I mean? And everyone goes, oh, I prefer hedgehogs or piglets. You know. And everyone comments and everyone, because it's a one-click thing. And then the next thing I post will be something that I actually want them to buy or are interested in. But because they've just interacted, they will see the one that I've done. So you're trying to build up engagement and interaction as much as you can. Tips and advice, obviously great. News. So sharing other people's articles. I'm going to talk about that a bit more in a minute. But don't overthink it. Like, you know, I think what, with Facebook, a lot of people worry too much about what they post. You know, it can be just a picture of what you're doing right now, a picture of your desk, what coffee you're drinking. It's all just trying to make you relatable and likable and show that you're human. You don't always have to be some thought-leading guru with every post that you put live. I'm definitely not. Um, the other thing I do is occasionally do posts where, like, I allow people to interact. So I'm quite, you can see I'm quite a control freak. But I control that conversation. So if I do a promo post, it's not just, like, promo. It's, like, how could you help someone else in the group? Or promo someone else's business. So then, and then if you're promo, do you promo someone else and tag someone? And little ladders. I do something in the I Love SEO group, which is one of the most popular posts, which is called a help ladder. And basically, you put your site live, and the person who puts their site underneath yours in the next comment has to tell you one thing they like and one thing they don't like about your site. And then the next person comments, and the next person comments, and the next person comments. And the last person to comment gets an audit from me live in the group. So usually, you know, I get sort of 80, 90 people putting their sites there, all commenting, all interacting. I'm not doing anything. They're helping each other. I'm just facilitating the conversation and then doing one 10 minute Facebook Live at the end for the person who won, who was the last person. Yeah? And then that, that Facebook Live is everyone who is in the help ladder will then watch the Facebook Live, blah, 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 blah. So try as much as you can to get users to generate the content for you. That's very helpful. Um, uh, my slide is a bit wonky here, but think about being a content curator, not a content creator. So as an SEO, I sign up to things like SEO Roundtable, Search Engine Lands, various other SEM posts. And then you, their um, posts come into my feed. 
and then I just share them into the group. So my group becomes, you don't have to follow all these different websites. I'm going to follow them all for you. I'm going to pick the best posts that are the most interesting, and I'm going to share them in my group. So it's a one-stop shop for, for information, because we've all got information overload, you know? So I, I do that for you. I create, create the content for you and put it in one spot. And follow an 80-20 rule. I think this is a good rule in terms of other people's content versus your content. So probably about 80% of the content I post is not my own. 20% is my own, but also this is informational versus sales. So probably about 80% of what I post is just info, tip, help, useful, and maybe 10, even 10% is sales. That's when I go, hey, buy my course. Hey, here's my free thing. Hey, get this checklist. Hey, get this template. So you, you, don't, you, know, you don't just be sell, sell, sell in your group, because again, people will or leave. But also, don't be afraid about selling in your group. It's your group. You know, what's the worst that can happen? Someone's going to leave. Be, a, be an owner, be a leader. You know, if people don't like it, they'll, they'll go. So don't be afraid of it. I see some people going, well, I, you know, I don't want to be too pushy in my group. It's like, it's your group. That's what it was there for. So don't be afraid of selling your content. And then, of course, the thing you need to do next is promote your group. Now, again, one of the easiest things I can do, I actually, in my diary every week, schedule two half-hour blocks to go and help people on Facebook. So I go into all those groups that I'm in, I go to the search box, I type SEO in the search box, and I see all the posts that people have posted about SEO, questions they've got. And I just take half an hour to just answer their questions. Uh, and and you know, then they ask me more, and I go back, and so I just take that time, and then at the end, I don't sell them a course or say, I've got this. I just say, hey, by the way, if you want a few more tips, I've got a group you can join. You know, it, I'm not selling them anything. They don't have to join the group. It's a really low barrier to entry. So it's a really great way. And most admins won't be annoyed by this. If you come straight in going, here's my group, then they'll get a bit cross with you. But that, that's worked really, really well for me. And obviously now, because I've got quite a few people in the group, and lots and lots of people have done my courses, about 4,000 people now have taken a course of mine of some description. I've got a lot of advocates, so that means I get tagged in other groups. So someone says, oh, I need SEO, I get tagged, and then I can pop in, I've got a little thing on my desktop that I cut and paste. Hey, thanks so much for tagging me. By the way, Sue, if you want some help, here's my group. It takes me a couple of seconds. That's one really good way, because people are already on Facebook, they already understand the notion of groups, so it's a very small leap for them to come and join your group. Um, the other things you can obviously do is, Put a, put a link to your group in your WordPress navigation. Use the custom link, free group, free group on your homepage. Have it in the footer of every email that you send out. Post it on other platforms. So set up a regular tweet, maybe, via Hootsuite. So once a week, you say, hey, join my group. Share it on LinkedIn. Share it on Google+. Plus. Um, yeah. Cool. Gosh, that's gone quick. Um, so yes, just make sure you share it. Okay, I've got to whiz through these now. The next, this is a really important slide. This is my mantra. Don't kill yourself with your group. Don't feel that you have to be there for everybody. You don't have to set yourself on fire to keep everyone warm. That can be the problem with groups, that they just burn you out, and then you end up hating them. So here are some common Facebook headaches. I'm going to whiz through them. Um, no one's joining your group. So the first thing you do, you have to promote it hard. You have to go at other places. You have to go out of your comfort zone. You have to speak at things like this. And then people know who you are, and they join. Yeah? You can't just start the group and think, I will build it, they will come, because they won't come. The next thing is that uh, you're not getting enough content, or that people aren't engaging enough. So one really good way of doing this is to create advocates in the group. So reward people who do interact. We used to have to use Gritics to see what people were doing in our group, but now we have Facebook Insights, and it will show you who are the top people in your group. So I do this every month. I pick a member, and I say, you can promote the crap out of yourself in the group. Well done for being an awesome member. And then they get to promote themselves, and they become advocates in the group. And you'll see the same names coming up again and again. The next issue is that I think that you're not visible in your group. So there were some very big groups in the US that shut down. I can't remember the name of it now. Kira, Kira... Kira Luma or something like that. She had a 40,000 person group. She closed it down because her voice was getting lost. No one knew it was her group. Every time she posted, it just disappeared in the feed. So you've got to control that conversation. You've got to be the first to comment. You've got to be in there. Otherwise, you will lose control of your own group. And someone else will come up and start giving advice and tips, and it will become their group. So you've got to have that authority. Lack of content. 
you know, that the tumbleweeds, nothing's happening, no one's interacting. Keep it simple, yes, no answers, silly pictures, just to build up the engagement and smatter that between the helpful stuff. Don't overthink it. It's fine to post a silly meme once in a while, you know. The other thing is that you just get tired, you get exhausted. It is a long game. When you start, you may not have very many members. Love those members hard. Tag them. Hey, Sue, you haven't commented for a while. How's it going? If it pisses them off, they'll leave. But tag the ones who you have the best relationship with. Because obviously, when you first start a group, a lot of people will be your mates. So but if people see other people interacting, they will interact. And if the worst comes to the worst, run a promo day. It brings all the lurkers out. Everyone comments, shows off, and then you can go back down again. The final thing is dealing with unruly members. You just have to be harsh. When I started off, if someone did something that broke the rules, I would write a little note saying, hey, Bob, you know, you broke the rules, and can you check the pin post, and please don't do it again. Now I just delete their post. And if they do it again, I just remove them from the group. Because who's got time for that? I'm not going to, if you can't be bothered to even read the pin post, don't be in the group. You know, you've got to be very rigid, because also if you let someone do something and someone else not do the other thing, then people are going to call you out for nepotism and things like that. People get very emotional. So that's it. <sighs> Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, you. Kate. <laughs> um, what a fantastic session for um, the last session on a, uh, in the afternoon. Funny, informative. Thank you very top much. Marks. Um, so we do have some time for questions. Um, and I hope uh, if anyone's got any questions, please throw your hand up now and we'll run a uh, microphone out to you. Yeah, we've got one over here. Hey. Hello. Awesome. <laughs> Um, I have a quick question around, since you said you, when you're closing the group, you actually approving each comment, don't you find that it's creating more admin, like heavy admin, rather than let them reply? Honestly, again, I'm, with the SEO group, I'm not concerned about having oodles and oodles of activity in there. It is very much a funnily group. So it has to work for my business. I have money to make. I have things to do. So... It's much better for me to spend half an hour approving all the questions in one blob than it is to kind of come into the group and try and scroll through and see what people have done. I'd much rather disapprove a comment or not allow it than have it be in the group for half an hour and then me find it. Also, it's that anxiety with that group because I have had so many idiots in that group. Do you know what I mean? Someone comes in, oh, I can get you to number one ranking, um, 50 backlinks, free, PBN. So... That works better for me. In the Misfits group, I kind of just let it happen and then deal with the aftermath. Um, but, you know, it works better for me that way. It isn't, it's less admin, I think. It's actually less admin, yeah. Great question. Um, throw your hands up. Who's got some more questions? I think they're all exhausted. Yes, we've got one over there. We all want to go to the pub, isn't that right? There's plenty of time for the pub. Um, <laughs> When you first start a group, like obviously the numbers not going to be great. Like, how do you see that? Is there a sweet spot to go to? Is that hundred, a thousand? Obviously, people are not going to join. Like, if it's just one or five people in the group. Well, the thing is, obviously, first of all, you just talk to all your mates that you've ever had and said, "Please join my group because I have no one in it." The other thing that's a really good idea to do, and this is what I did recently, is. Pick people from different disciplines. So say if you're a WordPress developer, maybe find a copywriter, a designer, an accountant, and say, hey, you can be my experts in my group, um, and I'll put your faces on the banner, and I will promote you. And then they come in, and they will bring people with them as well. But I think, I don't know if there's a sweet spot. I mean, my MasterChef's group only has 60 people. There's 60 people who are paying, though. I'd rather have 60 paying people than 600 non-paying. And, you know, it, it, don't be frightened of a bit of silence. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, people are still in there. Um, but love them hard. Give them a lot. Like, over-deliver in those first early months. And then they will start recommending it to other people. And also, the other thing is ask them. Say to them in the group, it would be awesome if by the end of the week we could get 200 people. Can everyone invite 10 people? It doesn't take them five minutes to do that. So just ask. If you don't ask, you don't get. But just love those first people hard because they will become your long-term people. Yeah. Hey, okay. Kate, what's Hello. your, um, it won't be a tricky question, um, <laughs> what's your tips for people who are not doing video at the moment um, for their business uh, and on Facebook groups and so on, um, what would be your tips for them to start doing that and doing it in a way which it doesn't suck and is successful? I mean, I think video is, uh, in terms of SEO and marketing and everything, it's, it's where everything's going and it's a really 
quick way to build authority. Like, you know, a lot of people come to me as an SEO expert and say, oh, I need to do lots of blogs. It's a long game with blogs. It's going to take you years to catch up with your competitor. If you do video, you're going to catch up super quick because it's more engaging. I honestly think buy a ring light from eBay because they make you look hot. They just, even if you're really ugly, they make you look hot. Buy uh, a video from eBay and just answer one question. Three minute video, ask the question. When you first start doing them, no one's watching anything anyway. It's only you and your mum watching them. And you'll get more and more confident. Don't build up to it. Maybe set yourself a challenge to do one a day. And just, you know, honestly, people are very forgiving. You know, and people who aren't, just kick them out of the group. Do you know what I mean? But I've never posted a Facebook Live and someone's gone, you're shit, you're ugly. Well, I have. But uh, <laughs> someone the other day said, yeah, exactly. But you just have to, I just think you have to let go of your ego. What does it matter? Like, it'll be gone down the feed in two seconds and something else will come up, you know? And if you do it and you hate it, delete it, do it again. But, you know, it's just like with public speaking, the more you do it, the better you get. So, but the ring light is my top tip. Because when you see how good you look in that ring light, you're going to want to make videos all day long. And then once you've made that video, just to say, you can download your Facebook Lives from Facebook. So I download them. I send them to Rev, I get them transcribed, then I put them back on my blog, embedded from YouTube, second biggest search engine, and then I put the Rev tr uh, transcription underneath, and now I've got a piece of SEO optimized content on my site as well. And then I take that video again, and I natively embed it on LinkedIn. And I take that video again, and I chop it up and make it an Instagram TV, and then I chop it up again and make it an Instagram story. So for that one three minute video, you get 20 pieces of content, so yeah. Uh, so firstly, could everyone join my group? No joking. Um, <laughs> my question is, how long does it take before you drop off people's feeds? Like, is it kind of like a one or two posts that they don't interact with and then they stop seeing your stuff? Or is it more like, you know, after about 10 or so, or is there no rhyme and rhythm between well, I mean, I think Facebook, being seen? Facebook is, algorithm is the most mysterious of all, and I'm definitely no expert in, in, in Facebook-ness. But you can look in your insights at your engagement levels, and you, you know, want them to be about 70, 80 percent. That means those people are engaging. You can't get rid of the people who aren't engaging because it's very difficult to do that. And you can't start booting people out. I don't know, but what I find is that as soon as I do a poll, the engagement goes up. It's really dumb. Or just find a really funny meme. So if it's high engagement, that means they're seeing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a and the thing is as well, like. Facebook, I find incredibly hard to measure this kind of thing, and you, you measure the ROI. I think you generally get a good vibe. It sounds so woo-woo and stupid, but you can tell when it's not going well, and you can tell when your content's bombing. And sometimes I'm embarrassed by a piece of content that no one likes, so I just silently delete it. Uh, but you know, you just you get a vibe from your group. But I don't know the exact metrics from it, and I'm not sure that Facebook would even tell us that because they're evil. Yes. Might have time for one more if anyone. There's one more question, yep. Hi, how do you know um, what the algorithm is? Because it's constantly changing. So like, I guess now Facebook group is the one that's a bit untouched. So how do you know what the algorithm is and when, you know? They well, I mean, you know, my area of expertise is, is SEO. So I'm like fully across their algorithm. And again, no one really knows what the Google algorithm is. We're all just guessing. Even the Rand Fishkins and the Neil Patels and the Cyrus Shepherds, we're all just guessing. So what do they do? They do something and it has an impact and then they do that thing again and it has an impact and so they assume that that's part of Google's algorithm and occasionally Google tells us. Facebook is a much more closed book. They very rarely tell us anything. So the only way that you can really tell is just by doing stuff. And I very much noticed that, you know, if you have a post that has a lot of love, the next post will get a lot of love. Do you know what I mean? Videos do better than images. You can see that in your insights as well. But I don't know Facebook's algorithm. I, as I said, I just kind of, you know, I just kind of muck along, really. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much, thank you very everyone. Thank everybody.